Today we're going to be talking about how to use chain rule to find the partial derivatives of multivariable functions. And in this particular video, we're going to be doing two problems. This first problem is what we call a case one type function where we have one dependent variable in terms of one independent variable. The key there is one independent variable. And then over here on the right, we've got a case two type function where we've got multiple independent variables, still one dependent variable. But the difference is in the independent variables. When you're using chain rule to find partial derivatives of a multivariable function, I highly recommend you make a quick tree diagram to help make sure you don't miss anything here. So the way that you're going to do that is you're going to start over here with this function in terms of w. So you're going to say w. W is defined in terms of x, y, and z. We have x, y, and z over here on the right-hand side. So your tree diagram is going to look like this, where you have x, y, and z, however many variables are included in this equation for w. Then over here on the right, you've got an equation for x, y, and z, and each one is in terms of t. So x is in terms of t, y is in terms of t, and z is in terms of t. What this tree diagram shows you is dependent variables on the top, intermediate variables in the middle, and independent variables on the bottom. So because we only have one independent variable here, this is a case one type multivariable function. So in order to take the partial derivative, because we only have one independent variable, we're going to be able to take the partial derivative in one function. The partial derivative is always going to be for the dependent variable in terms of the independent variable. So we're going to have the partial derivative of w, our dependent variable at the top, in terms of our single independent variable t at the bottom. And that's going to be equal to the partial derivative of w with respect to x times dx dt plus the partial derivative of w with respect to y times dy over dt plus the partial derivative of w with respect to z times dz over dt. And essentially what we've done there is we've gone down each branch of this tree diagram. So we started at w and we said w with respect to x right here. Then we multiplied that by dx dt, so x with respect to t here. Then we added to that the next branch. We said w with respect to y right here times y with respect to t dy dt. Now notice here that because these because there's only one independent variable and we have each intermediate variable in terms of one and the same independent variable, we multiply each of these partial derivatives by dx over dt. When we move over here to this second problem where we have multiple independent variables here on the bottom, we won't have dx dt, we'll have a partial derivative here instead. We won't have dy over dt, we'll have a partial derivative instead. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this is our equation. Now we just need to find each of these values and plug them into our formula. So partial derivative of w with respect to t will be equal to the partial derivative of w with respect to x. Well, if we go up here and we look at this function, we're holding y and z constant when we take the partial derivative with respect to x. Well, that means that e to the y over z is just going to act as a constant coefficient on this first degree x variable here. So our partial derivative there is e to the y over z. Now we're going to multiply that by dx over dt. That's going to be the derivative of our x equation here with respect to t, which of course is just 2t. So we multiply this by 2t. Then we add to that the partial derivative of w with respect to y. So here we treat x and z as constants. We take the derivative with respect to y. Well, we can just look at this as w equals x e to the 1 over z times y, like this. So x is a constant coefficient on this e term here. 1 over z is a constant coefficient on this y term here. So we're going to multiply 1 over z by this whole term. We're going to bring that down in front, and we're going to get x times 1 over z, which is just x over z 
e to the 1 over z times y or just y over z. And if you struggle a little bit with taking partial derivatives, I have lots and lots of videos on partial derivatives, but here I just want to really illustrate for you guys chain rule instead of spending a lot more time on partial derivatives. So then we're going to multiply that by dy over dt. The derivative of 1 minus t here with respect to t is just negative 1. So we'll get negative 1 here. Then we're going to add to that the partial derivative of w with respect to z. So since we're treating z as the variable this time, let's write this as w equals x e to the y times z to the negative 1. We can move this z here into the numerator by changing the exponent 1 from a positive to a negative. So we have y z to the negative 1. So to take the derivative of that with respect to z, we're just going to get the same here, x e to the y z to the negative 1, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the coefficient here. So we multiply by the derivative of y z to the negative 1 with respect to z. That means using power rule to bring this negative 1 down in front, and we get negative y z to the negative 2 when we subtract 1 from the exponent like that. Then we're going to multiply by dz over dt. The derivative of 1 plus 2t with respect to t is just 2, so we get times 2 here. Now it's just a matter of simplifying this as much as we can. So what we'll get is 2t times e to the y over z minus x over z times e to the y over z. And now here we have this negative and the 2 here, so we're going to get minus 2x y, then we have this z to the negative 2, so we can move that to the denominator and change the exponent to a positive and get z squared times e to the y over z. Now if from that we just factor out an e to the y over z, e to the y over z, we'll get times 2t here for that first term, minus x over z for the second term, minus 2xy over z squared for our third term. And this will be our final answer for the partial derivative of this multivariable function. Now if we want to jump over here to this multivariable function where we have two independent variables, we'll again use a tree diagram. We'll say that z is our dependent variable at the top. You can see that it's in terms of r and theta, so we can say r and theta, those are our intermediate variables. And then if you look here at r, r is in terms of s and t, so we have s and t. And we can see that theta is also in terms of s and t. So when you have two independent variables, you're going to end up with a final answer for partial derivatives in terms of each one. So notice here that our final answer for this problem was the partial derivative of w with respect to t. We had one equation for our final answer that was for the dependent variable in terms of the independent variable. Here we're going to have two separate equations, one for the partial derivative of z with respect to s, and then one for the partial derivative of z with respect to t. So again, if we follow our tree diagram and outline our partial derivative, our partial derivative of z with respect to s will be first z with respect to r, so the partial derivative of z with respect to r multiplied by the partial derivative of r with respect to s. Now this is not dr ds because we have multiple independent variables, so taking the derivative of r with respect to s requires a partial derivative to separate it from t here, so we're actually multiplying by the partial derivative of r with respect to s. Then we would add to that the partial derivative of z with respect to theta multiplied by the partial derivative of theta with respect to s. Now we can go ahead and write that one out, and then we'll do the partial derivative of z with respect to t. So the partial derivative of z with respect to r, if we look here at this function, cosine of theta, because theta is a constant, will just act as a constant coefficient on this e to the r term here. The derivative of e to the r is simply e to the r, so our first partial derivative of z with respect to r is just exactly that, e to the r times cosine theta. Then we're going to multiply that by the partial derivative of r with respect to s. 
Well, the partial derivative here of st with respect to s is just t, because t is the coefficient on this first degree s term here. So we multiply that by t. Then we're going to add to that the partial derivative of z with respect to theta. Well, in that case, since r is a constant, e to the r acts as a constant coefficient on this cosine theta term here. The derivative of cosine theta is negative sine theta, so we're going to get negative e to the r sine theta, and then we're going to multiply that by the partial derivative of theta with respect to s. Well here, if we pretend that this is actually theta equals s squared plus t squared all raised to the one half power, which is the same as the square root here, then we'll use chain rule to take the derivative here with respect to s. We'll get one half out in front, we'll bring that out in front, we'll leave the s squared plus t squared on the inside, subtract one from the exponent, one half minus one is negative one half, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is s squared plus t squared. The derivative of that with respect to s is just 2s, so we multiply here by 2s. Now if we want to simplify that, what we'll get is t e to the r cosine theta. In our second term here, we're going to get the 2 in this denominator and the 2 in the numerator to cancel, and we'll just be left with minus s e to the r sine theta, and then we have here the quantity s squared plus t squared raised to the negative 1 half. Well, if we just move that to the denominator and change it to a square root, then we have divided by the square root of s squared plus t squared. Now if we want to, we can factor out an e to the r, so we have e to the r, and this will be multiplied by t cosine theta minus s times sine theta, and I just wrote that to distinguish it from the sine theta so that it is clear, divided by the square root of s squared plus t squared like this in the denominator. And that's our final answer for the partial derivative of z with respect to s. Now if we want to take the partial derivative of z with respect to t, we're going to follow the same pattern. So z with respect to t like this. We're going to take z first with respect to r, so partial derivative of z with respect to r, and then multiply that by the partial derivative of r with respect to t. So partial derivative of r with respect to t, and then add to that the other side of our tree diagram the partial derivative of z with respect to theta times the partial derivative of theta with respect to t. Now if we just plug in these values, the partial derivative of z with respect to r, remember we already found it, it was e to the r times cosine theta, so e to the r times cosine theta. Multiply that by the partial derivative of r with respect to t. Well if we look over here, r with respect to t, the derivative there would just be s, so we multiply that by s. Then we add to that the partial derivative of z with respect to theta, which we already found here was negative e to the r sine theta, so negative e to the r sine theta, and then multiply that by the partial derivative of theta with respect to t. So again here, theta with respect to t, we'll have to use chain rule taking the derivative of the outside function first. We leave this inside function s squared plus t squared completely untouched negative one half there, then multiply by the derivative of the inside with respect to t, which is just going to be 2t. Just as before, we can see we'll get these 2's to cancel here, and what we'll be left with is s e to the r cosine theta minus t e to the r sine theta, we brought this t here all the way out in front right here, so sine theta, and then we'll divide by the square root of s squared plus t squared because we'll move that negative one half here to the denominator. And then just as before, we can go ahead and factor out an e to the r, and what we'll get is e to the r times s cosine theta minus t sine theta, all divided by the square root of s squared plus t squared, and that'll be our final answer. So because we had two independent variables, our final answer includes one partial derivative for z in terms of t, and one partial derivative for z in terms of s, one each for each independent variable.
So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.